YouTube. Welcome back to another History Teacher Reacts video with Mr. Terry as I continue my search for historical knowledge found here on the internet. All right, today's video comes from our awesome patrons over at Patreon, and they voted on this video, which is, Why is Rommel so complicated? This is referencing uh, Erwin Rommel, the German general in World War II, of course. And this is by a channel called Military History visualize now i've never seen this channel before or seen anything that they have produced so i don't know quite what their style is but i think it's an interesting um uh, topic and i think one for me because i am not a deep military historian i'll admit it and i know that's like the passion of so many people that are into history and i see it all over my community and one of the things that's been so interesting uh is you know with with world war ii and and kind of the nazis getting getting their you know the the, the image that they portray people often have this contrasting view of 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 erwin rommel and i never knew a, a, enough detail to be able to fully understand that. And I'm hoping that's what um, can come out of this um, a little bit uh, for me on a personal level. And I'm sure a lot of you guys have a lot of opinions about him and you're going to share them in comments and on the Discord and that's and that's great. So I think this will be really educational for me because I know the basics, but I want to get on a deeper level of why he is such a complicated figure as they, as they, uh, as they discuss here. So I'm excited to check this out. All right, before we begin though, as always, I uh, want to make sure I plug the original video down below in the description is a link to to the original video go there get them a view like subscription if you like what you see there and if you like what you see here on my channel um, following me along a history teacher trying to uh, go through the internet learn more from videos give context when i can and uh, just try to promote educational um, learning when it comes to history here on the internet but yeah love to have you around hit that sub button enable those notifications so you come hang out with us in our live streams and um, our uh, live premieres that I do and join our discord community link down below as well all right too much talking let's get to this but as is now the new tradition if we're going into some kind of war we got to prepare ourselves so let's go Erwin Rommel the desert fox see what they got here for us now why is it so complicated to make a decent video about Erwin Rommel well Rommel is very complicated for basically two reasons First off, a lot of different groups have or had interest in portraying him in a certain way. And second, he's a complex character that offers various answers. And those answers are sometimes quite contradicting. I, you know, I, honestly, I think complex people in history are the most fascinating ones. The ones that are so cut and dry, um, you can get through them pretty quickly. Um, complex things in history are what's often so um, intriguing to me. Um, I think it's one reason personally why I love studying and learning more about World War One, as opposed to a lot of other wars, even even World War Two. I, I like because the complexity of World War One is so fascinating. The deeper I go, the more complexing it gets. And and um, <clears throat> uh, figures, I think that goes as well. As a result, we have various versions of the Desert Fox, and I use the term Desert Fox here intentionally instead of Rommel, because the Desert Fox is that part that nearly everyone wants him to be. So let's take a brief outlook on the various aspects we need to consider when we want to take a glimpse at Erwin Rommel. So what, what does he mean here, and you guys can help me out here, about trying to separate Erwin, Erwin Rommel versus the Desert Fox and try to differentiate that? If you're talking about the de Desert Fox, are you talking about different attributes of Erwin Rommel? Um, let me know. And not just the Desert Fox. First off, Rommel was a highly decorated World War I veteran. He received the Poule Marie, the highest Prussian medal during World War I, as an infantry commander. This medal is quite well known as the Blue Max, and usually associated with fighter aces like Manfred von Richthofen. Ah, the Red Baron. Manfred von Richthofen, right? So, uh, you know, like, uh, Rommel, with, with so many of the people that are in charge of things in World War II, um, got their experience in World War I. I mean, nearly every major person in some aspect was involved like that from major countries, from um, Adolf Hitler, right, being a private in the military, uh, the German military in World War One, and you're saying Erwin Rommel too. But then even people that weren't necessarily fully military leaders um, at the time. I mean, Winston Churchill had his history of in World War One, a complicated one of being basically being head of the Navy until after the failure of Gallipoli, when he was forced to step down, and then he joins the the um, military proper there and fights in the war or even someone like FDR Franklin Dona Roosevelt who was um, in an administrative position in the Navy during World War One and you see this again in a lot of um, um, scenarios where these experiences from World War One 
carry a lot of people and kind of define their actions and inspire their actions in World War II. Uh, and the wars obviously changed a lot of people. Let me give me, uh, let me give you an example of uh, a couple of that. Like uh, Adolf Hitler, you know, famously uh, didn't really have political ambitions until he came out of World War One, but or out of the yeah out of the war. But even uh, it totally changing someone like Benito Mussolini, who was actually anti-war pacifist until he got into the war. I believe he was a, a sharpshooter. Then came uh, and again was a pacifist. Then came out of the war saying you know like m m a violent action and, and like military action is actually like commendable. It's amazing how war can change people. Getting a little off topic here, but I thought you might like that context a little bit. Yet not with infantry commanders, which was a less glorified position. Not to give you some indication on the relative difficulty in gaining the Poule Marie, it was awarded less than 700 times during World War I, whereas the regular Knight's Cross was awarded more than 7,000 times during World War So he's elite. Thus, Robert action. basically had already celebrity status after World War I in German society. Additionally, shortly before World War II, he published his book about World War I, titled Infantry Kraft an, or Infantry Attacks in English. These circumstances also earned him a great amount of respect from another World War I veteran. Um, the, the, this channel narrator, um, where's he from? What's his background? Anybody that can give me that info? It's always just interesting to, to know people's backgrounds. Namely Hitler, which brings us to the next part, Rommel's proximity to Hitler. Rommel was close to Hitler in many ways. Rommel was in charge of the security detachments during the annexion of the Sudeten areas, the drive into Prague, the annexion of the member territory and the campaign in Poland. In this time Hitler followed at least one suggestion from Rommel to drive to the fortress in Prague, which impressed Rommel, whereas Hitler was also impressed that Rommel strictly followed orders, and by doing so offending various high-ranking Nazi officials. Mm. Quite ironically for us, Rommel seems to have separated Hitler from the Nazi party or at least most other hmm. Nazi officials. He was very positive about Hitler from pre-war until mid-war, but negative about the Nazi party members. So why were these other Nazis, uh, uh, Nazis and their leadership, um, not a fan of Rommel? You can't really say that, but why are they, I mean, Hitler and, and Rommel looks like forging a relationship, but why are they in a way distancing themselves from the rest of the Nazi party? What did the Nazi party not like about Rommel? But one thing is clear, Rommel's relationship with Hitler was rather close. Especially after reading some quotes, it seems those two had basically a little bromance going on. <laughs> this relationship was probably the main reason why Rommel got his frontline command of the 7th Panzer Division for the invasion of France. Ooh, ghost division. After all, there were just Cue the sabaton music. a handful of those divisions available, and the request by Rommel was initially denied by army authorities. Not to mention that higher-ranking German army generals weren't so positive about Rommel. As odd as the relationship between Hitler and Rommel might appear to us nowadays, it was not so far-fetched. Both idolized each other for traits that they highly regarded. Both were frontline veterans of World War I. Both acted boldly and aggressively. Hitler restored Germany to power and gave it back its army, whereas Rommel was an ideal frontline commander in Hitler's eyes. Highly decorated, wounded in combat and without a general staff education. Something Hitler wasn't particularly fond of. Mm. Rommel wasn't the son of a Prussian aristocrat, like many of the German officers, but mm. of a teacher. Sim it's important to know that although, I mean, we're getting decades away from it, um, Germany is a new, uh, I mean, is a newly unified country um, that had a, um, um, had a monarchy, right? And, and, and remnants of that, of course, even after World War I, <coughs> uh, would have been all over the place. And... I guess yeah, in a way, because because Hitler doesn't come from 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 noble upbringings or anything in in Austria. So yeah, I mean, you, you kind of think it's like a not a rags to riches story, but you know, like a self made person kind of kind of a, a, a thing that they can identify with each other. Similarly, Hitler also did not have an upper class background. Today we would say both are self made men, whereas a large part of their surroundings were, in idea. their perspective, privileged. To use a contemporary term. As you can see, you can turn this information in different ways to portray Rommel in various forms. Hitler is well known for his ability to persuade people, being it in diplomatic meetings, with his channels, or in public speeches. So one can argue Rommel was just another one in millions that got seduced, tricked, or persuaded by Hitler. Or the other extreme would be that one that was so close to Hitler must have seen how evil he was. Hmm. Whereas the various positions in between... I mean, that, yeah, that'd be complicated. For as good as a general was or whatever he is, you'd still... 
I guess would have to people would still have to criticize him for being complacent in Nazi plans, no matter who he was on an individual level, but being so close to the situation <clears throat> and yeah, is it compli- you know, being complicit to it, uh, with it there condoning or lack of condoning doesn't matter really. Right. Those extremes are rather hard to grasp in a way also unsatisfying due to their lack for a better word fuzziness. And it doesn't get particularly clearer when we take a look at the death of Rommel. He was basically forced to kill himself in the months following the failed assassination attempt on Hitler on the 20th of July 1944. Although some argue that Rommel was involved, there seems to be very little evidence for mm-hmm. this claim. Rommel stated before and after the attempt that he was against killing Hitler. And considering that he once was in charge of a security detachment, this is very likely. Many channels that didn't have that job stated the same. Yet according to at least one author, one former member of the 20th of July plot tried after the war to create the national myth that Rommel was involved. And already during the planning phase, Rommel was considered the key person, because the conspirators believed that due to his popularity, more soldiers would join their side, and that their plan with a separate peace with the Western Allies would have better chances with huh. Rommel. So, you're saying the soldiers, uh, he definitely had the, the, ba- uh, the, the soldiers had his back. We find in history that that's such an important thing. The people are often in the military more loyal to their leaders than they are the nation itself, um, and will do their bidding. You know what I mean? Look at like someone like Julius Caesar, for example. Now, why was Rommel forced to kill himself? The short answer is some officers noted that he was involved, and additionally, a civilian member of the resistance that showed a major lack of operational security had papers that noted Rommel as a new Reichspräsident. Additionally, Rommel had quite many enemies. He was disliked by many in the higher echelons for his temperament, but also his influence with Hitler. Rommel actually suspected he would be sacked for losing the battle in Normandy and had papers prepared. And he was taken by surprise when he was confronted with claims that he was involved in the 20th of July attack on Hitler. In order to save the life of his son and wife, he took the offer of suicide. So, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll let it finish here, but... um. <clears throat> So the people that are more likely to not like Rommel, ones that say he's too close with Adolf Hitler, or he's too distant. I'm getting kind of both messages here. And thus his family would be spared. Furthermore, officially it was declared that he died in an accident. Yet shortly after the <laughs> war, his son announced that he was forced to kill himself. Similarly to the previous fact, you can turn this around in many ways. Especially considering that shortly after the war, the 20th of July conspirators weren't held in high regard. Something that changed later on. So depending on the agenda and time frame, you will find different arguments and different perspectives, supporting one or another claim. But let's take a short look at the military campaigns and theaters. Rommel fought against the British, US and Commonwealth forces in Africa, Italy and Normandy. That's a difficult enemy to a coalition enemy to have to, to fight against the british uh, and the americans um to fight them both that's that's uh, quite an undertaking right in north africa he achieved several victories especially against the british and won against the u.s troops at the battle of kerserine pass additionally rommel fought against several highly popular allied generals like Patton, eisenhower and montgomery mm. now why is this of importance well for several reasons the british after the war wrote quite many rommel biographies since the British leadership and channels made various errors, such errors seems less crucial if you are fighting the Desert Fox. Additionally, those who defeated the Desert Fox must be great generals themselves. North Africa was quite a... So they respect, I mean, they respect him as a, as a general. I mean, those are big names, Rommel, Eisenhower, and Montgomery, um, to be able to have there, so, yeah. ...important for the British, but probably the most important theater of the Western Allies was Normandy. After all, sure. Rommel was put in charge in reinforcing the Atlantic War, in France, and thus fighting against the D-Day invasion, which is one of the best-known battles in military history. Sure. Another aspect is that Rommel was seen... Pot- so, I mean, he's going to have to go down with the ship when it comes to, to D-Day, which we know there are so many other factors in why that was successful <clears throat> for the Allies there. And maybe one of the things we'll, we'll get to know is uh, uh, another impression that, that um, Rommel... I don't know if... if and you guys can help me with this, too. Um... With the whole idea of where the Allies were going to land, Normandy versus uh, Padicale, uh, I'm trying to remember where where uh, Rommel fell on that because I knew there were people that disagreed because Hitler thought it'd be Calais and others thought it was at Normandy and maybe he'll talk about that. So um, 
is it fair to put him, Rommel, um, into the blame for Germany's failure to defend against the D-Day invasion? Positive rebuttal allies during the war for his overall conduct and good treatment of prisoners of war. This That's some pretty amazing, though, to have uh, the allies have a positive view over Rommel as he's simply, he's a German, he's the, he's the enemy. Found him the respect of allied officers. So in a way, they sometimes are a positive portrayals of Rommel, but probably also out of respect and being an honorable victor especially since he could not defend himself anymore. We should not forget about early post-war literature, that these men had been fighting each other for years in the largest conflict in human history, just two decades after the previously largest war in history. It is very likely that some of them first and foremost want the peace and pay their respect to a highly regarded opponent, something we can hardly blame them for, yet something we should be very aware of when we are reading such accounts because we are responsible for getting the facts straight. The veterans already did their part by fighting the war. Which brings us to the next part, the post-war situation. Germany rather fast became the new ally of the British, French and United States in Europe. For this, a rearmament of Germany was also, West Germany. also the key, which also meant that former Wehrmacht officers and soldiers were part of the newly formed armed forces of Germany, the Bundeswehr. Thus it was necessary for Germany and to a certain degree also NATO to have a clean Wehrmacht general to fall back to. Since Rommel had served mainly in France and North dead. Africa, whereas nearly every other German general, and especially those who were very well known, like Guderian, Manstein and Model, served on the Eastern Front. Why is this important? Well, yeah. war crimes and atrocities were very common on the Eastern Front, whereas North Africa and France were for the most part, let's say, civilized. That's mm, okay, so yeah, seeing it as different conf conflicts in a way, different different actions in the East. I mean, the East is yeah, where a lot of the war crimes, atrocities, um, uh, where I mean, a lot of that is down because that's where the most Jews lived and stuff like that. Plus, you get the interactions with Stalin and and that sort of thing. So, uh, looking at yeah, I guess they're saying looking at these two fronts as very different things. And since Rommel is in a big part of the Eastern Front which was the, the worst front they're saying for atrocities and be more to the West front, it was more honorable. Okay, that makes sense. Rommel was a central figure that was accepted by former Western allies and Germany as an honorable officer that was respected by friend and foe, one person most people could agree upon, and in such a way that Desert Fox was probably a political necessity. Additionally, Rommel offered another benefit that most other channels didn't offer. He was dead. He couldn't say anything that caused trouble, unlike some other generals. He couldn't write a biography, nor was he tried at Nuremberg. Mm. And as previously, I wonder what that would have been like. What would, what would have been his experience at um, at the Nuremberg trials, where a good you know half of the surviving uh, um, uh, 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 Nazi leaders and German leaders, I guess in general, um, got imprisonment or, or death penalties and stuff like that? It would have been interesting. What do you guys think? What do you think Rommel's um, uh, uh, experience in the Nuremberg law or Nuremberg trials would have been? He died saving his family from the Nazis. Does he die an honorable death even by contemporary standards? Or to put it very bluntly, Germany and its new allies needed a German hero. And for politics, dead soldiers are usually the best heroes. Hmm. Which brings us to the final point. Ongoing contemporary issues that didn't change over the years. Namely, people want to tell a simple, clear, and usually quite single-minded narrative. For them, the guiding principle is simply to paint a black and white picture of a person, a group, a time period, or basically the world. To conclude, there was and still is the Desert Fox, and there was Erwin Rommel. In short, the Desert Fox offered nearly everyone major benefits. The Germans had their hero that they needed at the time, the officers that condemned the assassination could argue that Rommel was against it and kept his oath. Those that didn't could also refer to him as one of their own, or at least as someone who was killed by the Nazis. The Allies had an excuse for their early mistakes and additionally can state that they had beaten one of the greatest generals of all yeah. time in several So it's like, hey, <laughs> the idea of, hey, we lost, but let's make sure we have this narrative that for the allies that we lost, we lost to a really good person because it'd be more embarrassing to lose to somebody that wasn't very good, right? Interesting thought. Battles. Addition. So I guess he's saying that the the West is 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 what is propped up, um. Uh, uh, Rommel, right, as a formidable foe and having lost to you know at times to him, 
um, makes it look better in a way. They didn't lose to a failure. Traditionally, they needed Germany in the Cold War, and some just wanted to pay their tribute to a respected opponent. Yet if you look at Erwin Rommel, it gets complicated, confusing and irritating. Similar to most Germans, Rommel was quite fond of Hitler and also benefited from him. So Some this is the, the negative image, if you call him Erwin Rommel. It just separate the person from the, the general, right? Is that they're saying? I think in Germany, nobody wanted to be reminded of, quite understandably. You know, Hitler for post-war Germany was a bit like the ex-boy or girlfriend you don't want to be reminded of. Yet in this case, the whole world knows him <laughs> and not in a good way. Rommel made his fair share of mistakes in military terms. Also, the odds were more and more staked against him. Thus, the sober assessment of Rommel's capabilities would diminish both his reputation and thus that of his opponent. Additionally, the Second World War in Europe was first and foremost won on the Eastern Front, but it was won by the Soviet Union, which was the new enemy. To a certain degree, Rommel was probably too big to fail in post-war Germany. Due to his achievements in World War I, his achievements in World War II, and a lot of propaganda. And the general perception was that he was one of the few good Germans for all sides. And I personally think But are they saying good by like Nazi standards or are they saying good by what general standards, whatever that means? Desert Fox was a necessary step for several decades after the war. And not a bad one. Because let's face it, nobody was hurt, avoided justice, nor were there any negative consequences that come to mind. Something that can't be said about a lot of other issues regarding post-war Europe. But I also think there's no need for a Desert Fox anymore. I think we can mm. finally lay him to rest and let Erwin Rommel take his place. Because I mm. think he's an excellent reminder how complex and difficult life can be. And that sometimes there are no easy answers. It's pretty true. I mean, it's true about studying history in general. There are no easy answers. Everything's complicated. Um, it's pretty lazy, usually, when studying history to make things cut and dry. It's, it's pretty lazy perspective. And you're often usually going to get it wrong, but... He's right there. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Very cool. All right. Very cool. <laughs> All right, guys. So um, what did you think, especially you guys that are really into the World War II history figures and stuff like that uh, about Rommel? Do you do you share the authors here, author here, um, the 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 things that contrast and why is he complicated and stuff like that. One thing I guess I didn't get a ton of clarity is um, his haters. Why specifically do they not like him? Because I heard a lot of differing things about because he was close to Hitler or because he was different than him or something like that. And maybe it's both. I don't know. But um, the, with that with that sort of thing. And then who was it specifically that pressured him into taking his own life? Because um, that seems to be what had happened there, although they say it was an accident and all this stuff. But I don't know, maybe there's still just a lot more mystery around, around it that we don't um, don't end up knowing. I think I'll post a poll here today, too. So look for it as well. As, um, do, do you do, uh, um, see Erwin Rommel, the Desert Fox, as or in a positive light or more of a negative light? I guess it'd be interesting to see what the community kind of thinks of that. And I, I guess you can define that however you want. It's you view him positively or negatively. I don't know, but if I guess if you had to choose, I guess uh, I'm going to put up a poll. So look for that, and you can kind of share your opinion there as well. But all right, well, anyways, I did I did learn a bit about uh, about it, about what, maybe why he was a conflicting figure just a little bit. But I definitely have more questions about it, and um, hopefully I can get that from from you guys and, and uh, comments and Discord uh, Discord um, chat going on there because I know there's a lot of people. I've been you know for although I only had this not not had this channel very long. Um, here, so many people talk about Erwin Rommel, um, and people that don't know about him will pin the, usually those people in the corner, like, how could you support a Nazi or something like that? And then you get the, usually the big long rebuttal. No, 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 Erwin Rommel, he's, this is why, like, I view him differently and stuff like that. So I'm uh, interested in hearing, I guess, more of those arguments now. All right, well, anyways, this is a fascinating kind of thing, a fascinating take to to, um, to see here, and a little something different than what I've kind of seen before, so I think it's interesting. But, yeah, these kind of complicated ideas and people are, are things I'm really interested in learning about, so hopefully we get to see more of that stuff because I think that's this. Um, what what can make history so um, fulfilling to kind of look at that is make maybe things that are more difficult to look at make a little bit more sense, and uh, maybe he's a perfect uh, uh, 
kind of poster child of that. So, but anyways, I got a lot more to learn for that. So, all right, on the way out here, uh, make sure that you go down to the description and go to the video link to the original video. So you can give them like, subscription, view, and that sort of thing. And then if you haven't subbed, I'd love to have you sub uh, to my channel and be a part of our community there. Thank you to our patron pledgers who voted on this. If you'd like to join Patreon, there's a link down below. Starting at a uh, dollar pledge a month gets you involved in uh, in uh, being able to vote in polls to get videos featured on this. It's just a little way to support the channel. I don't want to uh, thank those people by having them um, have a little more say here. But thank you, first and foremost, just for being here, watching the video, being an active part of uh the history community here on YouTube and hopefully we can continue to grow that. All right. With that, we'll go ahead and see you guys next time. Bye.